This is a continuation of the previous video, so if you haven't already, please check it out. That Friday evening, I had my brother and nephew come over to help me move. It was just the three of us, and I brought my mother-in-law to watch the van. The complex is set up in two parallel rows, which are overlooking a courtyard area. The apartment rooms are two levels, with stairs going up on the internal corners. The area to the left of the complex is just an attachment to the upper level apartments. I believe it is used as storage and it forms a corridor to the lower level onto the street. Our van was parked near that area. There were stairs around that corner that go pretty up close to my front door. I left the outside light on at the front door and it pretty much illuminates most of the courtyard. Other than that, everything else is dark including the corridor. There is a light out on the street beyond the corridor so the street is pretty lit up. My nephew, my brother and I moved out all the stuff down to the van. Since we were all pretty spooked out and needed to urinate, we decided to go urinate in the corridor towards the street. It would be dark, we would all be close together, and it wouldn't be in the apartment. We all went into the corridor on the lower level at the same time. I believe my brother was on the left, and I was in the middle and my nephew was on the right side. The three of us finished our business and they waited for me in the courtyard while I went back to lock up. As I started up the stairs, I saw a shadow cast on the wall as if someone was running on the upper floor levels. I looked up and saw nothing, so I just hurried up and locked the apartment. The next day, me and an uncle who was related to my wife's family and works with me went back to the apartment to get the refrigerator. It had a newer refrigerator and I wanted to take it for my new apartment. This time, we went in during the daytime and took his truck. After moving the refrigerator to his truck, we decided to go pee. And since it was still daytime, we decided to use the bathroom in our apartment. Because of the things that were going on, I used the bathroom with the door open while the uncle stayed in the area just outside of the bedroom door. I finished and he had to use the bathroom too. Being that he wanted a little privacy, he closed the door halfway. I waited for him in the bedroom. We finished our business, locked up, and got on the road. As soon as we were a couple of blocks away, he turned to me and asked me if, while he was peeing, did I tap on his shoulders. I replied that I did not do that. Instead, I was waiting for him. He said that he felt somebody tap his shoulder while he was doing his business. He didn't turn around, though. A couple of days later, while I was talking with my mother-in-law about the time when we moved out, she told me, Remember that time when you guys were moving out and you guys decided to go take a piss in that dark corridor? I nodded. She then replied, I saw four of you guys taking a piss together. And let me guess, they were all holding each other's wieners. That is called bromance. I'm just kidding, I have no idea. Speaking of my in-laws, at the time, they had just bought a brand new house. During that time, they had a young son who was just under a year old. Whenever they went to bed, he would point at the closet. When they would ask him what it was, he would just say, Mao. And it was kind of like the noise of how children imitate a tiger. Whenever they would go play hide and seek, that kid would never go into that closet. He would hide everywhere else, including that bedroom and even under the bed, but never the closet. He wouldn't sleep on the side closest to the closet either. A couple of years ago, the kids would see a small girl, about 4 or 5 years of age, running around the outside in the inside of the closet. They would then go and check it out and there would be nobody like that. My kids would also see that girl too when they would go and visit. Speaking of closets though, there was one time when I was still single. My sister and my brother and two cousins lived with my parents in a three bedroom apartment. I was away at college. My brother and cousins shared one room, my parents took one room, and my sister had a room all to herself. The apartment was on the upper level and behind it was a big field where some teenage guys would hang out late at night. In my sister's room, she had a whole lot of stuffed animals. She would sit them all nicely in a corner. Her bed was away from the closet. Anyways, one day, 
she got married. After the wedding, she took all of her clothes and her stuffed animals. I had come home because of the wedding, so one of the older cousins decided to give me some room and went to sleep in my sister's old bed. That night, about one hour after everybody went to bed, we heard loud footsteps running from the room into the living room. We didn't think anything of it, so nobody got up to see what it was. The next day, the other cousin asked him, Was that you running into the living room? The older cousin answered yes. He said that as he was laying there, he could feel the bed move as if someone had stepped onto the bed and was walking up towards the pillow. He got spooked and ran out to sleep on the sofa. The next day, when my sister came back to pick up the rest of her stuff, we told her about it. She said that it has never happened to her, but she did notice that the closet door would be open about one inch every morning, even if she closed it all the way the night before. My sister told some of her guy friends, and some of her friends hang out late at night in the field right behind the apartments. They told her that sometimes, late at night, they would see an old man with gray hair, a mustache, and a beard looking out the window from my sister's room. That's a perverted ghost. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. I've always been told that baby ghosts are the scariest. I've never been haunted by a baby, and I hope I don't ever, nor do I wish upon it to anybody I know. It did happen to one of my cousins, though. Not exactly a haunting, but close enough. This happened in Laos. My cousin's older brother wanted to go court girls in a different village one night, but he didn't want to go alone, so he took his younger brother. The villages are separated by several mountains and canyons, and these mountains contained forests. As with most trails back in the old country, the trail that connected the two villages went past a cemetery where they buried infants. For some reason, I don't know why, but Hmong didn't bury their infants with elders. Anyways, the two brothers went out that night to the neighboring village. The younger brother didn't know how to talk to girls at the time, so he was just there to accompany the older brother. It was late at night by the time the brothers were coming back. As they came past the infant cemetery though, they heard a baby's cry. The older brother hurried the younger brother saying, hurry, we don't want that thing to get to us. The two of them started to run, but because the older brother was bigger too, he ran faster and started to lose the younger brother. At first, the baby's cry was far away, the further they ran though, the closer they can tell the baby came. When they reached a mountain peak, they can tell the baby's cry was from the canyon. They then made it to the next canyon, and the baby's cry had already passed the mountain peak where they were at. They ran with all of their might, trying to stay as quiet as possible to avoid the baby ghost knowing their position. However, the thing got closer and closer. Luckily for them, the villages weren't separated very far. They finally had reached their village. As soon as they entered the village, there were some people still awake, and the baby's cry had stopped. Here's another story from my cousin. It was the summer of 1987 or 86. My cousin's family had just moved to California for only a couple of months now. His family had gone back to Oregon for the strawberry season. If you were around during that time period, you would know what I'm talking about. I also remember that Hmong people loved to go pick mushrooms in Oregon because you could sell mushrooms for a lot of money. Anyways, my cousin was the only one who stayed in the apartment for the summer. One evening, he told me to go over and keep him company for the night. He came over and picked me up. That night, before going to bed, I went to take a shower. He was in the living room. To get to the bathroom, you have to go through the bedroom. It was a one-bedroom apartment, the type that had the bathroom built inside the bedroom. Anyways, I went into the bathroom and started my shower. I started to shampoo my hair, with my eyes closed, of course. As I was lathering the shampoo into my hair, I felt someone's hand touch my chest. I opened to look, but 
the shampoo went into my eyes and started to sting them, so I quickly closed my eyes. I quickly rinsed my hair, thinking that I was sure I locked the door. After rinsing my hair, I got out of the shower to make sure that the bathroom door was locked, and it was. I forgot about the rest of the shower and just dried myself and came out. My cousin was still in the living room watching TV. I asked him if he came into the bathroom. He said no. He was watching the TV the whole time. I then told him about what happened and the two of us took off and went to sleep at my house. The next day, I told him that I didn't want to go back. He came back by himself though. At first, he tried to spend the night in the bed. And that was when the thing came and sat on him. He saw it as a dark figure. He couldn't move at first, so he started to fight it. Eventually, he got free and went outside into his car. He went into the back seat and lay down to sleep. As he was starting to get sleepy though, he could see a dark shadow come to his side window at his feet. He fell asleep after that. That night, he had a dream. He dreamed that there was a blonde American teenage girl that came to him. She told him, No matter where you go, how far you run, I'm going to chase you until I get you. I followed you from Oregon. The next couple of days, he called his family and they came back to move. They moved without saying anything about moving. When you have something like this chasing you, you're supposed to just say that you're going out for the moment and will be back later never about moving. The thing where spirit or ghosts will follow you if you say that you're moving. After they moved away, it disappeared. You know how people who get sat on usually see a dark figure? Well, not so recently, a friend of my brother saw one. One weekend, about a year ago, my brother's Cambodian friend came over and spent the night on the sofa. During that time, he got sat on. When he woke up, he fought it. He could see a dark figure on top of him only. He fought the thing and it eventually went away. He got up in the middle of the night and took off home. The next weekend, a friend of ours came over. That night, he slept on the sofa in the den. He also got sat on, but when he fought it, he couldn't see anything. The very next day, he was still there. During that evening, we were watching TV. My friend was on the far right. Out of the blue, he asked me, Whoa, did you see that? I asked him, See what? I thought he was talking about something on the TV. He said, I saw a person walk from the hallway and quickly out the door. He pointed to the sliding glass door which led to the backyard. I told him that I didn't see it. That night, he slept on the sofa with my baseball bat by his side. Nothing happened. The following weekend, both friends spent the night there. This time, the Cambodian friend came over. The other friend was still here from the week before. The two of them spent the night on the sofas in the living room. Only the Cambodian friend got sat on though. From what he told us, he said that he got sat on and could not move. He didn't see anything on top of him, but he saw a figure standing beside him. It was a figure in blue jeans and a white t-shirt. He couldn't make out the face, just a dark head. He freaked out and started to fight it. Just then, the other friend turned in his sleep and coughed. The thing let go and he could suddenly move. This happened while the other friend slept the entire time. My brother talked to my dad. My dad said that whatever it was must have picked up from one of them. It didn't seem to bother the rest of us though. We then moved to the place where I am today. Thankfully, nothing has happened. A few years back, when I used to fish a lot, we used to drive all over the place fishing. One night, we decided to go fishing at a place where my girlfriend and her siblings used to go. The last time they had been there was more than five years ago. This place, nicknamed The Island, wasn't really an island but more like a small land peninsula that stuck out into the river. Just behind the peninsula, there were thick rushes and trees away from the river. My brother, my girlfriend's brother, and my girlfriend and I went. By the time we arrived, it was around 9 p.m. This was during the summer, so the sun had just gone down. 
We were there to go catch some catfish, and that was why we were there so late and planned to stay the entire night. After stringing up and casting my first cast, my brother and I decided to go look for some firewood. We went together at first, but split up about 20 feet apart to find some wood. We went into the nearby trees and we each came back with some wood and started a fire. By this time, it was dark already, so we fired up the lantern. Luckily, we had a propane lantern and not a kerosene lantern. Those who camp and hunt know what I'm talking about. And since it was dark, I pulled out my 9mm handgun and holstered it. I don't like talking loud at night because I like to keep my ears open and listen for strange noises. My girlfriend, on the other hand, likes to yap away. Well, a couple of hours had gone by. We started to hear wolves howl in the far, far distance. The wind started to kick up. And now that I think about it, it was strange that the wind did pick up. I decided to rebate my hook, so I reeled mine back in. I was standing up facing the fire with my back towards the river. My girlfriend was sitting down facing me with her back to the fire. She was talking as usual. My brother and my girlfriend's brother were both on the other side of the fire away from the river, watching their poles. As I started to put my bait onto my hook, I could see both my brother and my girlfriend's brother turn their heads towards the trees behind them and shine their flashlights at the trees. I instantly dropped my bait and hook and unholstered my 9mm and pointed it at the trees. My gun is always loaded and unsafe when I'm fishing. California Penal Code allows for loaded weapons during the act of fishing. My girlfriend was still yapping and I told her to be quiet. We were listening and looking for movement. The trees were moving from the window. After a couple of minutes of looking, my brother started reeling his pole in. He did this while keeping an eye out. Then my girlfriend and her brother reeled theirs in. Mine was already out. We just packed up and started to move. The worst part was though, the trail to get back to the car went right through the trees. My girlfriend's brother had the lantern and was in front. My brother and girlfriend were in front of me. Since I was the only one with a handgun, I took the rear. Boy, I'll tell you what though, my rear was real light that night. I kept on looking back as well, and with the pole in one hand and the gun in the other. The only light I had was from my headlight lamp, which wasn't all that bright. Luckily, we made it to the car safely. This story is from one of my girlfriend's brother's friends, so I'll tell it from his point of view. It was shad season, and the river was low. It was about 3 p.m. in the afternoon by the time I got to the river. There was an American guy in the waters about 100 feet to my right and about 30 feet into the river. He was in waist deep, which shows how low the river was. The guy turned around and waved at me. I waved back. I was going to cast my line, but decided to walk out maybe 10 feet into the river before doing so. As I stepped into the river, out of the corner of my eye, I saw somebody come up behind me. I thought it was another fisherman, so I turned around to say hi. But it wasn't another person that I saw. What I saw was a short white person with a dirty body. It looked as if someone had smeared chocolate all over his body. I freaked out and nearly shat my pants. It didn't see me though for some reason, and it just kept on walking along the shore. I threw my gear down into the water and started running towards the direction of the American guy. When the American guy heard me splashing water, he turned around and nearly shat his pants too. He also started to panic towards the shore. All that happened in a matter of seconds, but it seemed like an eternity. I ran all the way back to my car and drove home. When I got home though, I thought about my gear. Crap, my pole is a $300 pole and my reel was a $200 reel. I called up my cousin to see if he wanted to go back with me to go and retrieve my gear, but the chicken did not want to go. Since this was an experience of a friend of a friend, I never did know if the guy was able to retrieve his $500 piece of equipment. More stories in part 3.